All right, hello. Okay, today what I want to do is I want to share a presentation with you on something called the mole. And you can tell I'm kind of funning around with you a little bit by having this little furry mole that you would have in your yard. But we are going to accomplish two things. Our goal is to accomplish two things in this first lecture over the mole. Honestly, the number one item is just to kind of introduce to you what the mole is, okay, what it is, what this number is so, you know, the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, why that number is so important, but really what the mole is, kind of, kind of how we use this idea of the mole. And then to begin to introduce you to some, something called the line method or the fractional method, that you're going to have to be able to do in order to do the calculations that are going to be found in this unit. Okay, so the best way to do it is just to get started. Let's dive in. Let's eat our elephant one bite at a time. Let's learn a little bit. Obviously, I'll be giving you some practice in class and going over some things with you, but it's your responsibility to give me some quality time right now and to give me your attention and your effort and your focus. All right, here we go. So we're gonna learn about the mole today, and you're gonna to continue to hear this number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which is obviously a number that is written in scientific notation. We refer to that as Avogadro's number, and we will refer to that again and again and again. The mole, also sometimes spelled M-O-L, in chemistry, okay, is a standard scientific unit. Now, I know I'm not going to interrupt myself tons and tons, but here's what I'm going to say. You should understand the idea of a unit at this point in time in your chemistry career. You should understand that a unit is used to describe a number. It is used to give that number meaning, to stand for a particular item. For instance, if you were using grams, you would know that you, that number is referencing mass, which is the amount of matter that is in something. Okay, the mole is a scientific unit that is used for measuring large quantities of very small entities. Okay, well, what do you mean by entities? Things like atoms, things like molecules, or other specified particles. So understand that we are going to use a unit that will talk about items that are very, very small. Think about it like this. It might be a little bit problematic or a little bit cumbersome to try to talk about the grains of sand on a seashore. What if we had a way to make that a little bit less cumbersome, a little bit easier perhaps to deal with? And I don't know if I think this is the greatest example in the world, but it's an example that I often use. When I send you to the supermarket, I don't send you to the supermarket to buy individual eggs. When I send you to the supermarket, I usually tell you how many dozen eggs that I would like for you to purchase for me. So if I say two dozen eggs, you know that means 24, but I don't say 24. I say two dozen, which by my way of thinking is a little bit less cumbersome way of talking. Okay, I mean, if I wanted 72 eggs, wouldn't it just be easier for me to say, and I know that number, you know, you say, well, the number needs to work out exactly because I buy them in multiples of 12, and I understand that, but wouldn't it just be easier for me to say I want six dozen eggs? Okay. All right, so here we go. Once again, going back to our furry little buddy, me and Avogadro are going to help you talk about amounts. So make no mistake, what we're doing today is we're using a metric SI unit to talk about amounts of very small items. So that number just itself is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. As I said before, that's an extremely big number. You understand that because you should understand scientific notation. You should have done some problems on scientific notation in chemistry A, try A. And so you know that this means that I'm gonna move the decimal point 23 places to the right. Wow, that's a big number. Yes, that's a big number. Why do we need such a big number? Because we're talking about very, very small items. The mole of a substance. So if I have one mole, okay, one mole. If I have one mole, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd representative particles 
of that substance. And I will explain this term, representative particles, more fully to you here in a second. But at this point, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd representative particles of that substance. And it is the SI unit for measuring amount of a substance. So the mole helps give me amounts, okay? Now, I thought this would be a nice visual aid to use at this point because, and, and, and listen, it doesn't have to be accurate. Okay, that's not the point. The point is it's a visual aid. And you're gonna hear me say that time and time again. Visual aids are to help you understand concepts. They don't have to be 100% accurate, okay? What you have right here is you have the idea of a red blood cell. Here's a polio virus all the way down to an atom. Now, what's the point of the slide? That an atom is really that size? No, an atom is a heck of a lot smaller than that. That's not the point. The point is, look at the relative size of an atom compared to a red blood cell. We would think that a red blood cell was tiny. Look at how small the atom is. So if I had just any, just a glass of water, can you imagine how many atoms of hydrogen and oxygen there are just in a glass of water? It's like the grains of sand on the seashore. Maybe I could have a less cumbersome way of talking about how many I have because I don't think I really want to talk about how many I have. I think that's going to be a huge number, okay? All right, so here we go. However, it doesn't make any difference how small you are. We still might want to talk about how much of you we have or the amount, okay? So how many do we have, if that's the question, all right? So Avogadro and the mole are going to help you talk about amounts. Now, I put this slide in here because I want to go back right now very quickly to this representative particles. Well, I think you understand the term representative. I think you understand that we have what's called the House of Representatives and we elect people to go there from each of the states and what do they do? They represent the state's um, um, issues. Whatever is important to that state should be represented in the House of Representatives. Okay, so you have all of these individuals that are representing particular states. I think you understand the idea of a species. I'm pretty sure you understand that a rabbit is different than a cat, which is different than a dog, which is different than a white-tailed buck deer. All right, now they're all, they are all mammals, so they do have some relatedness for sure, but they, at the same time, they are different species. So, you know, what if I had two pet rabbits and three cats and four dogs and every once in a while I see a deer in my backyard, okay? Could we talk about amounts relative to different species? Sure we could, okay? We sure could. But let's be more specific to chemistry. So what are some representative particles in other words, what are some different species, and you understand I'm doing this in quotations, so you understand that we're using this conversation in a broader sense, okay? Well, what if I had an atom, just a single atom, or just a particular type of atom? What if I had diatomic atoms, where I had two atoms of the same type bonded together? What if I had a molecule? You should know what a molecule is. What if I had a compound like H2O? What if I had an ionic compound like NaCl or salt? you know, which would have a formula unit rather than a molecular formula. And you understand that from learning about bonding. So what if I had these different, these are really, are they related? I guess in a sense they all have atoms, but are they different? And the answer is yes. So these different species, what if I wanna know how many I have? Well, then I can have that discussion, but I would use a unit called the mole, okay? So let's be even more specific. So what would an example of an atom be? Well, maybe hydrogen. What would, what would an example of a diatomic molecule be? Well, any of these, that's just an atom bonded to itself. Probably one of the most famous for us would be O2 or diatomic oxygen gas that we breathe in. What about molecules? What about carbon dioxide? What about water um, down here for a compound? What about uh, something like calcium chloride or what about salt, NaCl? Okay, the point is, if these are our different representative particles, now listen to what I just said, if these are our different representative particles, that's fine, but how many do I have? Well, Mr. Dave, you wanna talk about how many you have, 
then we're going to use the mole and we're going to talk about Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Just like if I want to talk about how many eggs are in a dozen, I'm going to say that there are 12 eggs in a dozen. So if I have 24 eggs, I by default have two dozen eggs. Okay, let's not overcomplicate this. You may be dealing with a large number written in scientific notation that you've never messed with before, but that doesn't matter. The concept is the same, okay? If a dozen is 12, then 12 is a dozen. If a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, then if you have a mole, you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Well, what if I don't have a mole? Then you have less than that. What if I have more than a mole? Then I have more than that. Let's use some common sense. All right, so a mole of any substance is going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd representative particles of that particular substance. Okay, so here goes. I'm introducing you to the mole. I'm introducing you to the idea of Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That will help you decide how many representative particles you have of that particular species, okay? So this is a number that you're going to be using a lot. Except in this unit, whether you like it or not, this is in organic chemistry, you're gonna have to do some math work. So you're going to have to learn how to convert you're gonna to have to learn how to go from like moles to atoms or atoms to moles, or there's all kinds of things you're gonna learn. So you're gonna use a very handy method called the line method or the fractional method. So I've introduced you to the mole. Now I'm gonna start introducing you to the line method so that you can do some of these problems. All right, so here we go. So, it turns out that the line method is a method of conversion, okay? And so converting from one thing to another, and we'll continue to talk about that. It's called the fractional method. We call it the line method, we call it the fractional method because it involves the use of fractions. Guys, don't overcomplicate this. You've done this before. Now, I will tell you that depending upon how many conversions you need to make, you could use more than two fractions. Okay, the number of fractions, you know, is only limited by what you want to solve for. But we're going to start in an easy way, okay? Now, you also understand from your math work and your knowledge of fractions that fractions can do what we call cross-multiply. So, this particular one would be extremely easy because two and two would cancel out and four and four would cancel out and your answer would be one. It's that simple. So here's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you in this unit, we are going to be using the fractional method a lot because you're going to be using the idea of the mole a lot and you're gonna be using 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd a lot and you're gonna be setting up problems and you're going to be doing conversions and you will be using the fractional method. Okay, so we often speak of conversion factors. Now, these are values that enable us to convert from one measurement type or unit to another. But keep this, keep this in also in the realm of what we're trying to accomplish in this unit. So think, think, think. So if I tell you that I have a certain amount of atoms, you can tell me how many moles. Now look at what I'm saying. So if I tell you how many eggs I have, you can tell me how many dozen I have. But what if instead of telling you how many eggs and asking for dozen, what if I give you how many dozen I have and I want you to tell me how many eggs? Okay, so in other words, I have a certain amount of atoms, I want you to tell me how many moles I have. Or what if I just tell you how many moles I have and then you tell me how many atoms I have. Can I do that? Yes. So can I convert from here to here? Yes. Can I convert from here to here? Yes. Would I set that problem up the same way? Yes and no. I would use the fractional method, but obviously my fractions would be different. Now, I'm not going to start with an actual atoms and moles problem. I'm going to start with just a simple problem that we would often use the line method for. So here we go. It takes 3.78 liters to make one gallon. Now don't make that difficult, just, just accept it. 
That is how many liters there are in a gallon. So if I know this, okay, and what do I already know? I already know that Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, so there are no secrets here. So if it takes 3.78 liters to make one gallon, what if I knew that I had five gallons, but I wanted to know how many liters? Well, okay, first of all, I'm gonna set up a fraction. Well, how am I gonna do that? I'm always gonna put what I want over what I wanna get rid of, okay? I'm talking about units. I'm gonna cross multiply and I'm gonna solve my problem. Okay, well, let's be a little bit more specific. In this particular problem, we've only got two items. We're only going from gallons to liters. So I think common sense would tell you that the, you're only gonna have two fractions in this problem. I'm converting from gallons to liters. I'm only making one conversion. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna automatically know that I'm only gonna need two fractions. Now think about this, and if you don't fully understand it, you can always stop it, you can always rewind it, you can listen to it again, you can watch it, you will also be given some practice problems in class. Okay, all right, so here we go, and I know that I'm gonna get an answer. But I know that my answer had better not be in gallons, my answer had better be in what? Well, it better be in liters, because that is the unit that I'm converting to. Remember, your answer always has to be in the unit that you're converting to. So, if I have five gallons, what am I gonna put that over? Well, I'm gonna put that over one. This is what I'm given. What I'm given is always going to go over one, okay? Remember, I'm setting up a fraction. Well, what do I want? Remember, this is what I want. This is the unit that I want. So there's no secret as to where the 3.78 goes. The 3.78, in this case, has to go in the numerator because it takes 3.78 liters to make what? To make one gallon. And I should have put GAL, but I didn't, but that's okay. So think about this. Why does gallons have to go in the denominator? Because I want these two units to cancel out. Obviously, I don't want to be left with the unit gallons. I want to be left with the unit liters, okay? And then what am I going to get? Well, ultimately, I'm going to get an answer that's going to be a value, but I darn well better make sure that I have the right unit. All right, let's continue. So what unit do I want? Well, I want liters. What unit do I want to get rid of? I want to get rid of gallons. And this goes back to what I said earlier. I'm always going to put what I want over what I want to get rid of. Now, your conversion factor may not always be in the numerator. Sometimes it might be in the denominator. That's just however it works out, okay? In this particular case, it takes 3.78 liters to make one gallon. What am I wanting to do? I'm wanting to convert from gallons to liters. So what unit has to be in the numerator? Well, what I want. What unit always has to be in the denominator? The one that I want to lose, the one that I want to get rid of, so to speak, the one that I'm converting from. Okay, what? Okay, well, here we go. So I'm going to take what I'm given and I'm going to put it over one every time. So I'm given five gallons. So I'm going to take what I'm given. I'm going to put it over one. What, do I, what am I wanting to solve for? Well, I want my unit of interest is liters. What unit do I want to convert from? Gallons. So I'm always going to put the unit that I want to convert to over the unit that I want to get rid of. And this should be common sense. Why? Because I need for these two to cancel out. That's why it's called cross multiplication. That's why it's called the fractional method. And then what will I get? Well, I'll get my answer, but it will have the correct unit. So gallons over one, liters over gallons, and my answer, after I do the math, I'll have a mathematical answer, but I'll also have the right unit because these two units will cancel out. Now this is where a lot of kids, not everybody, but a lot of kids get lazy. A lot of kids wanna take the path of least resistance. A lot of kids are only worried about how fast they can get it done. A lot of kids are only worried about getting the points. Forget about getting the points and worry about getting the knowledge and the points will take care of themselves. Sloppy work and poor form and the lack of units will often lead to missed questions. Whereas the students who are willing to put in the work, the students who are willing to show their work, and the students who are willing to show the method rarely miss. Now think about it. So I have five gallons over one times 3.78 liters over what? Over one gallon. 
what will happen? Gallons will cancel out. In this case, I multiply and I get 18.9, 18.9 what? Liters. What did I want my answer to be in? I needed for it to be in liters. Is it in liters? Yes. What unit did I need to convert from? Gallons. I was converting from gallons to liters. So what happens to these? They cancel out. That's why it's called the fractional or line method. What do I get? I get my unit of interest. What was my unit of interest? It was liters, okay? Now don't forget, sometimes your, your, your conversion factor will be in the numerator, and sometimes it'll be in the denominator. It's just however the problem works out. But the basic format for solving the problem is always the same. Go back to this. Take what you're given, put it over one. Take what you want to find over what you want to get rid of because they have to cancel out. Now, you will use this line method time and time again in this unit as you examine the mole and as you use Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, I've introduced you to the mole. I've given you a brief introduction to the line method. Obviously, we're gonna do practice problems and obviously you're gonna learn how to do very specific problems. But for today, lecture one, you've been introduced to two items.